How's it going legends? Today we're going to take a look at the riffs in the latest vid, Death Metal Twin Harmonies. Starting off with the first riff which goes <laughs> Now that one, if you break it down to the that is the same pattern as easy death metal patterns. The first video of mine that was uh, looking at just a simple shape of uh, and I was like, let's just tremolo pick that. Now what I did with that was slow it down and throw in some hammer-ons and pull-offs. So. And then with the harmony of that one, because I'm going to just copy the exact same pattern but just move it down a set of strings, Instead of going like directly below that and now the B strings tune one back, I'd have to change the fingering pattern to What I did with that one was just move it up to here, which is that's that note. And then move one string down. There's the first riff. And the second harmony part was and all I did with that one it's like if you were to sound out a chord like and that's how I sort of think of harmonies like I don't even really know the theory behind them I'm guessing like there it's a be a major a fourth because you've got the first note a major scale would be so if that's one, two, three, four, that's what I'm doing is that fourth note of it. There's your fifth, which is a fifth of your uh, power chord. But see, even hearing me ramble on about, okay, here's the major scale. Here's the first, second, third, fourth, and try and explain harmony. Like, to tell you the truth, I really don't give a shit about any of that stuff. What I know is that if I just play the exact same pattern on the strings ex right below that first note as I start a pattern, if so say I'm just going like, you know, I just play that same thing and when you record it, it sounds sick, sounds awesome, case closed. Theory definitely will help you, um, you know, to navigate writing songs, song structure, but this is just the way I do things and everyone's on their own path and journey so yeah whichever way you want to approach your songwriting hey there's lots of information go study theory definitely would help with the uh the road map to it but i think i like the happy accidents which makes it tougher sometimes but hey i have fun with it anyway so back to what i was talking about we've got that uh first riff then when i went to the clean section all I did then was grab those same notes of the and went and created a chord using those notes, which was just seven, six, four, and then four on that the second string. And then I just did the hammer on and pull offs on the uh, fifth fret. I was just moving that whole shape back um, one lot of frets. And then I was like, oh, that's a pretty cool pattern. How about we just put a bit of distortion and delay? And then, which I think they're called arpeggios. When you, And 
then I went, you know what? What I always do, let's tremolo pick that one. And that came later on in it. it was like... <laughs> Then after that clean section, all I did was a simple pattern of... And I did it with power chords, was... Tremolo picket. Which if you remember back, easy death metal patterns where I've got the whole... Which is looking at that first finger using the one, two, three, four finger method. Looking at the first and the fourth finger. Focusing on your first finger. So even like trying to explain this uh, right now, I start improvising, just go. <laughs> Miss that harmonic then, but this is what I'm always doing. Searching, using these same things that I do over and over. Like the fact, I didn't even notice it when I was um, creating that riff that I was using that death metal pattern. <laughs> Same thing. And that's how I just closed that whole thing out was. And that's it, that whole. And that was it, you put all that together, had a bit of, you know, program the drums to do that one. And that's, uh, you know, pretty much how I did that whole thing. So yeah. I really want to encourage um, everybody just to keep improvising and using these techniques because once you lock some of these ones like that, that is such a cool little thing, you know. And triplet. Mixed up with a tremolo. And creating any pattern, like just randomly grab anything like. I'm like, that's a pretty cool sound, a little group of notes, and then it'd be like. And when I went for any of that stuff, I'm not thinking, oh, right, I'm going to use this uh, minor scale. I'm going to use this type of theory method. I just know that certain patterns are just going to work. They just always work together. It's those semitones. And someone could, like, with um, their theory, explain exactly what I'm doing. And why do I gravitate towards those notes all the time? But, yeah. That's just not the way I write my wrist. It's not the way I um, create. So if some people use theory more to create, that's totally cool too. And if that's the pathway you want to go down, then definitely I think if you know you wanted to incorporate more classical finger picking methods, because it's you know it's not like um, I'm the greatest player out there or anything like that. It's I admire and respect all forms of guitar and some of the way these classical people play and like really train and understand movements and all this. It's really going to unlock a lot of doors um, for your playing and your creativity. Mine I would call caveman riffs. So, hey. That all being said, take care of yourselves and look after each other.